So this is the results of pouring on the plastic, the other video that I did. There are sheet protectors that you put paper in and I pour it on a plastic surface. It sticks to it beautifully. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to I cut a rectangle. I have an 8 by 10 frame. that comes with a mat so it will look like this I traced a horse pattern this is the Tennessee Walker on a piece of paper then I cut it out on a thicker piece to use as my pattern and so what I'll do is the horse will go on top of this pour painting and this will be painted chocolate color the same as the frame roughly so that will be and then I'll have a quote at the bottom about horses this is going to a group of horse friends. So I've traced out with a pencil. This is Conti a Paris. It's a white pastel pencil. And I'm pretty sure I just got it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's kind of chalky. So I took my mat and put it over my piece and I'll show you how to do that on the next one. I traced out the rectangle and so now I just want to center my horse I think I'm going to do the, the yellow side up like it'll represent the sun So, make sure I'm centered. You can't see the lines, but I've got lines drawn out with the chalk pencil. And this is a very fine point Sharpie pen. And I'll go back in and fill in this whole area that I'm drawing out with a chocolate brown paint. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you paint in the shape of the horse, you can make sure all your edges are smooth and make sense and you can paint over your black line so it doesn't show. Okay, so I have a very soft outline. There's an outline of the horse, and I'll paint it in with the chocolate brown. Okay. Here's one I've cut out, too, and it's the purples and greens, kind of watery looking. Okay. So my next one, this one's really cool. it probably turned out the most colorful. And so I take my mat and I find where I want to place this. And I could even, if I go this way, I could get two from this same one. It just depends on the colors that I want to pick out. You can angle it and find any kind of colors. So there's a little green over here too. I think I'm 
I'm going to do that one. So I take my pastel pencil, and when this is finished, I can wipe this off with a damp paper towel that this can wipe off. It's like chalk, it's just a little firmer because it's in a pencil form. So there's one shape, and this one has got all kinds of beautiful colors. And I want to get some of that beautiful turquoise, but I can't get too close to my other one either. Like I said, I could even angle it a little bit. Just have to make sure that I'm not too close to the other rectangle. Okay. This is the back of my mat, so it doesn't mess up your mat or anything like that. So now, got my knife, razor blade, a metal ruler, which is wonderful, and a cutting board. So I just go maybe, you know, half an inch or so away from the border because you don't want to cut it on the line because then when you put your mat down on top of it, you it would you know, it would move around possibly and you would see the edge of the piece. So it needs to be bigger than your five by seven area. So there's another one. And what I'll do is on the back, look, that's neat too. Even the back of the plastic is where your paint hit the surface first. And this is what you see on the top. That is even a pretty muted background, but it's it's shiny and it's slick, and I want to do it on the painted side that is not shiny and slick, and I'll paint on here and it'll hold my paint better. But I'll what I'll do is I'll put it there on the back and I'll tape it before I put it into my frame. So like this one. will be, oops, like that, and then I'll go in the frame and I'll have the horse painted here, and I'll have a quote at the bottom. I also have a few of these champagne colored frames. I have more of these, but I have some of these, and depending on the colors, I might switch to the champagne frame. So I went and bought these today. These were buy one get one free at Michaels. So you get the you get this, you get the mat, you have a piece of glass that goes over it, and the horse will get painted on here. With anything that you find on the computer, you Google images and you pull up, you know whatever, you know, if you want dogs or whatever, you know, you want it to be, you just pull it up in Google Images and pull up clip art or silhouettes and it'll give you the outline or the image that you need for your project. There's a slight image of a horse there, and I will paint that in with the dark chocolate brown, and that'll be the horse. I know a lot of people do scrapbooking, so a lot of people probably have cutting tools and things like that. You know, this is just a utility knife. I just make sure that my ink is coming out because you're on a painted surface and sometimes there might be a little bit of residue of silicone or something that it, your pen won't mark it as clearly. So just have a piece of paper around 
to scribble a little bit until that ink starts coming out again. This one is beautiful. It's, pre it's pretty there and it's pretty here. It's rich here and it's very pale here. Um, there's metallic gold in this one. It's just super beautiful. Lots of pretty cells. So, I look and see, you know, where I want to place it. Also, I make jewelry from the skins. And I am definitely going to make some beautiful jewelry from the pieces that are left from these sheets and make some beautiful pieces. This, uh, this here would make gorgeous jewelry. So, I think I'm going to do this one. About like that. I feel like a little bit of water, a little bit of metallic gold, and some red and pinks. Remember, use the back, the back side of your mat, not the front, so you don't get any chalk on it. I'll show you too just the difference how pretty turn it back oh see I got paint I got paint on this one I'll have to do something creative with this mat paint it um, soft cream with a little texture to it or something to make it usable. So here's your mat. Here's your frame. You'll have a quote here. And then the horse will be painted in with the chocolate color. See, I could even do the cream color in the horse, but I'll probably do the dark because I like the silhouette feel. But sh I'll show you how putting the champagne colored mat changes the whole look. So it depends on the piece too. That'll make some pretty, pretty jewelry there. This one is really pretty. Metallic gold. Turquoise and blues and browns. And this looks like a stream water with water going through a pebble. This will make beautiful jewelry. The metallic golds with the blue, navy, dark navy, and the browns, and the hint of pinks. And then there's some pinky tones there that would make some pretty jewelry too. So. So 
So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is from a pack of sheet protectors that I cut because they're like an envelope. You slide a piece of paper inside, so there was two pieces. So you take them apart and you've got two sheets for every sheet protector. So I paid $5 for 20 pieces of plastic. And it's a great way, you see you turn it over and look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's like soft and muted. This plastic is frosted just a little bit. It's not totally clear, but you can see how pretty it is even on the back. How different it is from the front. Here's the back, here's the front. This one is totally different from the others. I'm not crazy about it, but I'm going to cut one. So that's the way it would look. And then your frame. And then your dark horse on top with the quote. This one is really kind of muted too. So I'll try to get the most interesting part of it that has the most contrast. And I let I let when I when I poured on this plastic, I gave it several days. I wanted to show you when I did the video the other day I, paint, I poured on sheet protectors the plastic sheet protectors and I used a mat from a pre-made frame that has glass with it and I cut out my pieces a little bigger than a 5 by 7 and I just wanted to show you all these, and they're pretty good heavyweight, but you can paint on them. You can do a silhouette of something. You can do, if you're an artist, you can paint a flower or a frog or a butterfly or a bird or whatever you might see in that environment. Or, you know, this could be like a stream and you could paint something you would see, a fish, a koi. Look at that with the metallic gold. Isn't that gorgeous? I've made myself some custom, beautiful, hand painted pieces of art. You can just, you can put a mat and a frame on this. Or you can put it in a 5x7 frame just the way it is. And it's beautiful. You don't have to have a canvas. You can buy sheet protectors. Plastic from the Walmart or an office supply store. Look how beautiful that is. That one looks like fire. This one's kind of dull, so it needs something that really pops off of this one. Maybe a planet or something, I don't know. I'll save it for something later. This actually is on, this one is on craft paper. The craft paper that's on my table. 
that has the shiny surface. So this is, you can take this and peel the paint right off of this sheet because it's on the shiny side and this doesn't, it doesn't stick. It can, you can leave it this way, but you put your jewelry pieces So here's an example. Let me find one that would make a beautiful piece of jewelry. So here's a chain. Here's a bevel. And here's the cabochon, which is like a clear glass. It's got a flat surface. So what you do is you put your jewelry glue on wherever you want your piece to be. So you move it around before you put your glue down and you find, let me bring it up close. I, well, I drew a horse on here that I'm going to paint, but this is just to show you, like right there, right here. You would glue this down to your piece, let it sit for 24 hours, and then you cut around it with scissors or a, a sharp razor blade after it's dried for 24 hours after you cut it out you take that piece and you glue it into this holder this bezel so the tray has an edge and you have glue in here and then will be the layer from the painted piece and then your jewelry your glass will be on top it'll be beautiful so this you know these I'm gonna do artwork on but I have all these scraps I can take my thing, glue it down, cut it out, and then put it in here, glue it in there, and I'll have a beautiful piece of jewelry. And there's earring holders, there's bookmarks, all kinds of neat things. And you can order these on Amazon, you can get them on Etsy. But they usually, you know, a lot of the Etsy ones come from China, which takes some time. The company that I like to use is Lily D's. L-I-L-L-Y apostrophe S D. Or you, or you just type in www.lilyd's.com and they have all kinds of neat jewelry making items plus the glue. So I use their glue and uh, the chains come with the necklace if you buy a kit the chains come with the tray and the piece of glass and you buy glue and you've got you have a whole set of jewelry fairly inexpensively for yourself or you to give away or to sell or whatever I'll have a, later on I'll do a video on making jewelry and I'll show you the whole process. I'll be back.